In this video, I want to talk about some of the factors that affect the fusion of gases in the lung. So let's start off just by drawing the familiar uh, diagram, which we would recognize from West. My drawing is not the best in the world, but you'll have to bear with me. So we'll have that there as the alveoli, and then we will draw a blood vessel in here. Let's draw a blood vessel in a sort of bubble gum kind of cutoff, just to keep it colorful. So this is our, our blood vessel. Okay, so, and we learned from when we did um, the videos on the blood gas barrier that this, this barrier is very thin, but it consists of quite a few structures and we learned all those structures in the last video. So I'm not gonna go too much into the detail there. What are the factors that are gonna affect how a gas diffuses from the alveoli into the bloodstream? Okay, so we have gas in here. Let's just say this is oxygen. This is the gas that we're gonna analyze and watch it diffuse across this barrier. So diffusion, as we should know, is the is a process by which something moves across a barrier, so diffuses across some sort of membrane based on the concentration gradient downstream. So it's gonna go down the concentration gradient from an area of high pressure or high concentration to an area of low concentration. So the basic idea of this is that these gas molecules don't really wanna be near each other. These oxygen molecules don't like being close to each other. So they are, they're gonna try and spread out, which means they're gonna fill empty space. So they're gonna go from an area where they're very cramped, try and spread out into space where there's less oxygen molecules so they can spread out. So they're gonna diffuse down across this gradient into into the bloodstream here because the pressure the concentration or the partial pressure of the oxygen molecules in the alveoli is much higher than the partial pressure of the oxygen molecules in the blood okay so the p alveoli we could let's write that out let's pick a different color here um so the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli is greater than the partial pressure of oxygen in the capillary, okay? So because of that, there is a pressure gradient and that pressure gradient is what causes the oxygen to diffuse. So let's write that down as one of our factors. Let's, uh, let's go with this color here, pressure gradient. Okay, that's an important one. So that can sometimes be called delta P. You may have seen that, or you may have seen it just as this, P1 minus P2. Okay, so we have the pressure gradient. What else is gonna affect how much the volume of gas that we can diffuse across this barrier? So let's look at the properties of the gas itself. So if we had a gas like oxygen, where the molecules are reasonably small, um, and then we compared it to a, a gas where the molecules were much larger. Let's just see if we can depict that here. Let's see here are our gas molecules. Now, rather than these ones, which do you think are gonna just intuitively without thinking about science, which do you think are gonna get across this barrier easier, right? If we think about a small molecule trying to get out across this barrier rather than a big molecule, it makes sense that the small molecules are gonna be able to do it easier. They're gonna be able to get across faster and sneak through any gaps that they're gonna to need to get through. You'll see, you may be wondering why over here I've drawn a picture of a train. We're gonna use this to kind of analogize um, this diffusion across the barrier. If you think about lots and lots of people on this train trying to get off, they're gonna get off through these doors. And if you imagine that there was lots of people in the train, and nobody on the platform. That's a little bit like our gradient we talk about here, where there's lots and lots of uh, gas molecules in the alveoli, but very little in in the bloodstream, while relatively fewer in the bloodstream, which means that there's a gradient. It's, and if there was no one on this platform, people would easily be able to walk off the train and go in about their business. However, if this platform was full of people, then it would be much harder for these people to leave the train quickly, because there would be people in the way Right, and it's the same here. If there's a much higher concentration 
in the fl in the uh, in the bloodstream already, then that gradient isn't there for the gas to diffuse down. Similarly, I guess you it's breaking down a little bit now, but I guess you could think of if a little small a child tried to get off the train rather than a big eight foot man, and there was people in the way, then the a smaller person would be able to squeeze through the gaps and get out of the train station faster than faster than the big person. So we could kind of look at that over here as well. That small molecules will def diffuse faster than big molecules. There's also solubility to take into account. It's considering that the f in here is fluid, plasma with cells. Uh, these gases have to dissolve into the plasma, and the more soluble they are in that plasma, the faster they're going to diffuse across. Okay, if you have a gas which is highly soluble, it's going to diffuse across this barrier quicker than a gas which isn't very soluble in this fluid, because that's where it's going to end up. It's going to end up in the fluid, and then if it's in oxygen's case, it's going to bind to the hemoglobin. Okay, so there are some diffusion properties of the gases themselves. So let's just put that down. So gas, let's just put gas properties. Okay, that's going to that's going to affect the rate of diffusion across the barrier. What else have we got? Well, it makes sense that if this is filled with gas, the the area with which there's a communication between blood and gas, if that's larger, then there's more space for this for the gas to diffuse. So if the surface area of the lung is bigger, the surface area of the lung we should be accurate where there is communication between gas and blood, a ga a blood gas interface. If that is larger, then there's more space for diffusion to take place. So there's going to be more diffusion. Okay, so surface area is going to be an important factor. I showed you in the video we did on the sort of anatomy of the blood gas barrier that there's an enormous surface area of the lung. And that's for this very reason, so that there is a large surface area for gas exchange to take place. So let's put number three, surface area. Okay, and that's going to affect it. In a second, we're going to look at in which way these affect it. Will it be proportional directly or indirectly proportional? So we're going to have a look at that in a second. What else is going to make a difference? Well, how about the thickness of this barrier? Because if you think about this barrier becoming thicker, what is that going to do? That is going to increase the distance with which the gas has to diffuse. Right? So increase distance equals decreased diffusion, right? Or at least decreased speed of diffusion because the gas has to travel further. That should make sense. If you, something has to travel further than it did before, then it's gonna take longer, okay? So we have, if we increase the thickness of this barrier, then that's gonna affect the diffusion. And it turns out that in, in the lung, this barrier is extremely thin. And again, it's for the, it's for the reason of we need to diffuse gas quickly. So this barrier is very, very thin. However, it can become thickened in disease states. And when it does, that impairs our diffusion capabilities. So number four, let's talk about thickness. Okay, so maybe let's try and put this into some kind of formula. So zoom out a little bit. Let's take a nice fresh new color for our formula. So let's talk about the volume of gas that's going to diffuse. And that's going to be proportional to. So let's look at what these are going to be proportional to. The pressure gradient. So if we increase the pressure gradient, and by that we mean we make it steeper, we mean there's a bigger difference between one side and the other, that should increase the speed of diffusion, right? Just as we talked about with the people trying to get off the train, lots of people on the train, nobody on the platform. There's a big steep gradient in terms of train versus platform, number of people. So people are going to be able to get off quickly. And the same in the lung. If there's a very high concentration of gas in the alveoli and a very low concentration in the blood, then that gradient's going to be steep. So that's going to be directly proportional. Okay, so let's talk about our pressure gradient here. So let's say P1 minus P2. So that as that increases in size, we diffuse more volume of gas. How about the area? The surface area, as that increases, we can diffuse more gas. So that's going to be directly proportional. And then these gas properties, we're going to turn that just a diffusion constant, and I'll define that in a second. 
and then we have the thickness of the barrier. If we increase the thickness of the barrier, we're going to decrease the amount of diffusion. So it is inversely proportional to the thickness. Okay, and this formula here is called Fick's Law. So let's write that down. This is Fick, F I C K, Fick's Law. And I remember that because thick sounds like thick. So thick has to do with the thickness. So this is relates to the diffusion of gas through the lung. Thick's law. Okay, let's define this diffusion property that we were talking about. Diffusion constant, I should say. So the diffusion constant of a gas is going to be proportional to the two things that we mentioned. The first one was the solubility. How soluble is the gas in the fluid that it's going to dissolve into? And then how big are the molecules? And for that, they use the square root of the molecular weight. Okay, molecular weight you can find on a periodic table. And so it basically means the bigger the molecule, the slower it diffuses. Yeah, but also, the more soluble the molecule is, the faster it diffuses. Okay? So let's look at that. Let's give a quick example of that, actually. If you take carbon dioxide and oxygen, they have a pretty similar molecular weight if you look them up on the periodic table. Their molecular weights are similar. However, carbon dioxide is a lot more soluble in plasma than oxygen is, so it diffuses much, much faster. Okay, so what have we covered? We have the alveolar capillary membrane. We talked about diffusion. The pr the factors that affect the fusion across this membrane. We talked about the pressure gradient, the properties of gas themselves in terms of solubility and molecular weight. And we talked about the surface area, saying that the increasing size of the surface area leads to more diffusion. And we've looked at the thickness, that the thickness of this barrier corresponds to the speed with which gases can diffuse across that barrier. And then what we've done is we've put it in, into this formula here. And this formula is fixed law. It's a very important way to think about to think about gas exchange and also to think about how that can be affected by disease states. Okay, so maybe we'll get a little bit more into that in the next couple of videos. But this was just to introduce you to fixed law, this law here, and how all those properties really relate to gas exchange.